I am back with another video, specifically going over the Bouge RV flexible solar panel. Uh, recently, I did a video on the Bodega cooler, so if you want to go watch that, you can click the link somewhere up here. Uh, but I want to really get into this solar panel and specifically MC4 connectors and how to wire MC4 connectors because uh, the MC4 connectors or wiring on here are super short. So if you're going to have this on your roof or if you're going to have this far away from whatever you're plugged into, you're going to want an extension cable. Also, uh, my EcoFlow Delta 3 Plus does not take MC4 so you have to have an adapter. So we're gonna get into all that fun stuff if you're new to solar and you're looking for a really low effort setup, this is it. So as you can tell, I have it wrapped up in a thin yoga mat just to like protect it. And I have it just bound up here with a bungee cord. I keep this in the back of my van. I don't even have this thing permanently mounted. Okay, girl, this thing is way bigger than me. So, this thing is super flexible, it's super durable, but it really gets the job done. I mean, this thing, this thing is awesome. It, it's really bendy. I got the one that has grommets, so I can hang it on the side of my van, hang it from a tree. Um, I can put it on my roof rack if I want, but I don't because I like to park in the shade but I like to put my solar panel out in the sun. If I'm at the park, if I'm at a campground, wherever. This thing did an amazing job of powering my giant EcoFlow. So keep watching, because I'm going to show you how I use this thing, and I'm gonna show you how to clamp and crop your own MC4 connectors, and I'm also gonna show you how I made MC4 compatible with my EcoFlow because a lot of these power bank brands want you to buy their really overpriced solar panels, but you don't have to. So I'm a huge fan of this thing. It is paper thin. It is paper thin. So come along, come along and check it out. This is the Bouge RV Yuma 200. So it is 200 watts and it just comes with these MC4 connectors. They're not very long. So you will have to get extensions uh, depending on what you're plugging it into, whether you're going to do a series of solar panels so you can connect these to uh, more of these solar panels, or if you're going to connect it to a inverter or a power bank. So what I had to do because EcoFlow has the XTX connectors for solar, I did have to get an MC4 to XTX connector. Uh, they're fairly affordable. Uh, yes, this is after the market. It's not EcoFlow's um, product. So I'm sure if they see this, they'll know and void my warranty. Uh, no offense, haven't been that thrilled with their customer service in the past anyhow, so that's okay. Um, this is my first time trying this out, so I'm pretty excited. This one has the grommets. So there's the adhesive version, and then there's the version with the grommets. This is super flexible, super lightweight, but still fairly durable and easy to clean. Uh, it's about six feet in length. It does fit up on my van pretty well, but I'm not gonna mount it up there, just a personal preference. Uh, as most of the time when I'm using this, uh, I'm gonna want this to kind of chase the sun, whether we're at a campground or somewhere like this, just hanging out for the day. Uh, but I do like that I can hang it and I can still put it up on my roof uh, if I want. Bouge RV also sent me a 10 foot extension. Uh, this comes separately uh, and they did not put the housing on for me. So today I'm gonna walk you through how to do that. If you encounter this, uh, they did at least strip some of the plastic covering off of it so I can slide this off a little bit easier. It also came with these two tools. These uh, are used for a few different things. These go on to each part of the housing to loosen or tighten them. And then this part is to disconnect the housing from each other, the male and female, for the positive and negative sides. I also have the metal connectors here and then the housing to go on them. This is where it can get a little bit confusing, so I'm gonna walk you guys through this. 
So the first thing I notice here that I kind of want to address right away, see how these are not tightened down all the way? There's a gap here. That is not the best if you want this to be watertight, protected from the elements. See how these, uh, both sides of these are completely closed at this point. So I'm just going to carefully cut that off so I have a little bit more length here to work with. So what you're going to want to do is you put one side on this part of the housing and then you take this hole in the middle and put it through the other side of the housing and that way you rotate both sides to tighten it down all the way until there's not a gap and that's going to really protect it from water from rain from the weather so you can really grip both sides and tighten it tighten it down like so that's already looking better and then i'm going to do the uh, positive side trying to beat the rain here it's a little bit overcast today so i easily pulled the y uh, the plastic casing off um, what you're going to want to do is rotate this but let me just pull this one off first so you can get wire strippers i highly recommend and they have different gauges and then you basically it'll just cut the plastic part of the wire for you and then you can just yank it off easier forgive me okay so now these are open this is where it gets a little bit confusing but i'm a visual learner so i hope this helps you as well this is a male mc4 connector this is the plastic housing this is a female mc4 connector the plastic housing this is why they call it the male and female okay so we have those now there are two different types of the copper housing the copper connectors you have once again a male and a female the end of both do have holes that's where the wiring is going to be crimped into this is the part that kind of stumped me it's all right you're going to put the male copper pin in the female plastic housing you're going to put the female copper pin into the male plastic housing the black cord or the negative is going to go into the male plastic housing the positive or the red cord is going to go into the female plastic housing i don't know if that makes any more sense but i feel like maybe screenshotting this or having some type of diagram will help to explain what needs to be connected with what so the next step i'm just going to twist these a little bit I ended up having a little bit of trouble with this part, but essentially you're supposed to put the copper housing into this tool and then put the wiring inside of it and clamp it down. And if this worked properly, it would clamp down all the way and then release once it was crimped. I'm not sure if these were even meant to be crimped, honestly. These copper pins were absolutely impossible and I even purchased the right tool that was meant for MC4 connectors. So let me know in the comments, did I do something wrong? Um, there was not really great direction. Sorry, Bouge RV, your directions kind of suck. All right, the next step is uh, sliding this on, and then you're gonna put this part on. Get it on there nice and tight. And same thing like we did earlier. We're just going to tighten this as much as 
possible. And then you're just gonna repeat the same exact process on the other side. Connecting the MC4 connectors is fairly straightforward. It's male to female, so it should fit properly. However, you wanna make sure the red cable goes to the positive and the black cable goes to the negative. Luckily, this solar panel has the cables already labeled with a little tag on it in case you get confused. In order to disconnect them, you're going to want to use this little tool. It has these little forks at the end and they go into a hole on each side and it just unclamps them. I highly recommend getting these tools if your solar setup did not come with them, but they normally do. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. All of the products will be linked in the description down below. And stay tuned for next time where we try out a movie projector in the park. I'm going to give you an honest review. Are these little smart projectors worth it? Are they something worth buying for the fall season for camping or your backyard? I'll let you know. So don't forget to turn on your notifications. Click that bell. Stay safe out there, and don't get bamboozled.